Oil majors are seeking, uh, seeking uh, to fund. Well, oil majors will be seeking funding from alternative markets as there are indications that the banking sector is shunning fresh investments in fossil fuel development. Now, we're looking to ask what the future holds for the oil and gas industry, which is very important in Nigeria's economy. It's day two of the cash withdrawal policy of the Central Bank of Nigeria coming uh, into effect. We'll look at the success or otherwise of the policy and attempt to look into the economic crystal ball to get a sense of what to expect in the coming months. And in other press, we'll bring you in-depth analysis of today's major newspaper headlines. All right, uh, you're welcome. It's a breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and uh, we're glad to be back. We have a bumper package for you this morning. My name is Kofi Bartels. Apologies for starting some minutes behind time, uh, but the show is here, and the show must go on. Well, as usual, we will look at what's been the trending talk on social media online, what's got tongues wagging, and, of course, that's what we call our trending segment right here on the breakfast um let's start off with uh, yesterday checked out my twitter and uh, saw uh stop Brimo was trending and it was interesting an interesting conversation funny at times but for the most part of it it was worrying worrying now why why were nigerians tweeting stop Brimo? some in support some against uh, the the call to action you want to call it that well um Brimo is a Nigerian singer. Uh, um, he is the one who sang the, the chorus in uh, Ice Prince Zamani's Oleku, all right? And um, he has a number of hits, like uh, Something to Go Around Town and some other songs like that people love. He's, he's been able to carve a niche for himself as a, a very unique um, a musician with a, a unique sound and unique style. Um, and some say it even reminds them of the legendary fella Anikbo Lakbo Kuti. Um, but he, he, he's been controversial online in recent days, <clears throat> if you want to call it that, most especially in recent days. And that's why thousands of people began to tweet the words, Stop Brimo, um, is what they were saying. Um, he's one of the African artists nominated under the Songwriter of the Year category at the forthcoming Afrima Awards, the 8th All-African Music Awards, which is scheduled to hold in Senegal, I believe. Um, <clears throat> the annual awards event is organized to reward excellence in the African music industry. Uh, it's expected to hold on the 15th of January. That's the 8th edition of the Afrima Awards. And thousands of people called for Brian Mode to be disqualified uh, from the awards, all right, from the awards. Always contentious remarks about the uh, Igbo community. I don't know if we can look at, a, uh, at the tweet he put out. Um, some words there are unprintable, um, so you, you forgive us if you see anything that you don't want to see on your screen. I don't think we're going to put that. But he used the words F-U-C-K and uh, Ndigo in the same sentence. Let me call it, let me just put it that way. He used the words F-U-C-K and Indigo in the same sentence. Uh, it was a derogatory tweet. Um, a lot of people didn't take it kindly at all. Um, <clears throat> he was responding to a tweet which has since been deleted. I looked for that tweet which he responded to. I couldn't, look, I couldn't find it. I wanted to know what the person was saying. But... Uh, uh, Olawale, or, you know, Brimo, Olawale as he's called, um, has, he has been complaining, you know, he says that he's been attacked, uh, he, people were saying, take it easy, <clears throat> don't uh, say these things, you know, your, your career is at stake, we love you, but we don't want to see things like, uh, <coughs> excuse me, like this coming from you. But Brimo is claiming that... Um, that he was threatened is what he's claiming that he was threatened you know um, one of the tweets he put out in response to someone who was asking him why he was saying uh f-u-c-k indigo um he said that um 
how will he be threatened with death uh, his family threatened and he will keep quiet now some people came out in support of Bramo saying that they're voting for him you know we've got your back we're supporting him. but it seems to be a uh, sort of a tribal debate going on which is not something we always want to see uh, in Nigeria uh, it's, we have had too much of this uh, tribalism going on you know the the conversation and the debate went on to um, you know some people say no Lagos is no man's land mostly from the southeastern part of the country where uh, the indeed what Abraham was referring to are from um, <clears throat> Nigeria's southern southeastern uh, part or flank um, so, so some of them were saying, you know what, Lagos is no man's land. Just trying to, to what he called, throw uh, Brimo. And uh, he said that he's from Badagri. You can't tell me that uh, Lagos is no man's land. It, it was quite worrying, really. Uh, I do not know why Brimo went uh, to, to this, this extent of using that word, the F word, uh, on Indigo. You know, I don't know if there's anything uh, that should uh, justify that. I mean, throughout yesterday, uh, Bramwell took his time, took quite a number of time, to uh, an amount of time rather, to engage in a back and forth with uh, people who were criticizing him on Twitter. You know, probably to show that he, he can withstand them. You know, um, for instance, uh, someone said, how I wish you are not the singer of Never Look Back. How can you be uh, this bigoted, sir, and make a lot of meaning in your songs? You know, in, in other words, to say maybe he's a tribal bigot. And uh, Brahma replied, you wish? You won't find a way. Switch the author and the performer of the song. Why? And stop calling me, sir. And he now tells the bad guy, effing bigot. You know, so people are, are concerned for the safety, the health, the welfare uh, of Brahma. He's trying to make some points he says um you know lagos is not no man's land and all that uh someone says uh ua Igbo woman house at chevron it's a nigerian pigeon and he says it's not a, a shift in position i do it all for the tribe that won't listen uh all right so he seems to be saying you know he's angry at at Igbos and you know maybe some of them threatened him uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's quite, quite sad, uh, <coughs> or quite, quite a contention. Um, apart from, you know, normal Nigerians out there on Twitter taking Bribo on regarding his uh, remarks, derogatory remarks about the Igbo community or Igbo uh, ethnicity, um, we've had also, uh, uh, you know, um, celebrities commenting on this. For instance, I saw something from uh, uh, Paul Okoye of P-Square, um, he took a swipe at uh, Brimo in the message he put out also on the micro-blogging platform. And this is what he said. Um, he says, mind what you say. All right, that's Paul, or root boy of the P-Square group that is now back uh, together. He says, mind what you say. Um, Brimo and Elia and those Bola Metinibu, all right, <laughs> And that, that was the genesis of, of, of all of this. Uh, so what you have, you know, in the t Twitter posts following is just an offshoot of the, the pressure that Brahma has been feeling on Twitter now, <laughs> you know, taking effect on him. So this is what uh, 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 Root Boy of P-Square said. He said, um, uh, mind what you quote, mind what you're preaching. Election will come and go. Uh, we all will move on. But you decided to be a tribal bigot because you think you are getting some attention by insulting a particular region of Nigeria. And some people are praising you as an artist. I'm only disappointed. He didn't mention anybody's name, but people think that that is a veiled reference uh, to, to Brimo. All right. So, I mean, I, I think the guy, you know, Brimo, the artist, has, has just buckled under the pressure of the attacks that he has been receiving online following his endorsement. Uh, of Bola Metinbu, the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress for the presidency. And I get it. I mean, even Charles Sonodo, uh, for all his greatness, buckled under the pressure and had to pen a very long uh, letter. We've just gotten to part one of that letter uh, on Peter B's presidency. A lot of people were surprised because they're from the same state yeah, and they're friends. Um, uh, you know, Root Boy, P Square, Paul Okoye is one of the uh, 
uh, the artist along with his brother publicly backing Peter Obi. So some have said, you know what, you, uh, you know, Root Boy P Square criticizing Brimo, you're publicly backing another presidential candidate. And all those who are criticizing Brimo, um, I should stop criticizing him because you have other artists who are backing presidential candidates and they're supporting <laughs> these artists and supporting the candidate that these artists are, are backing publicly. So why the backlash, why the criticism, why the, why the fire on Brimo simply because he's supporting a candidate some people on Twitter do not like? It is his constitutional right. But for Brimo, um, buckling under the pressure to say those uncharitable words about a, a, a tribe in this country, um, uh, I think it's, uh, he's made a mistake that he may uh, regret in the coming days, weeks, and months. You know, because you don't want to be, you know, the one, you know, tweeting hate speech against the tribe. It's, it's really sad. It's really sad indeed. And I hope that um, uh, Brimo may, will be able to find, you know, redemption and will also find his way back to, uh, 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 you know, some sort of uh, apology to those who are affected by that. Because when you tell somebody, F you, use F word, it's, it's one of the most... Uh, they're great three things to say to anyone. So it's, it's quite sad. Um, some have said that Bram was simply doing this to trend, <laughs> you know, to trend and maybe sell some more of his music. I don't know if that is, is true. But so far, from what I can see on my screen, I don't know if we can show uh, the, the, the screenshot of the, the petition. It's on um, a change.org. Uh, so far, about 2,500 people have signed the petition you know, calling for Afrima to cancel the nomination of Brimo uh, for that award. So let's see how it goes. Um, if Brimo will get more people through this controversy to support him, or if Afrima uh, will pull the plugs, uh, pull the plugs at the end uh, of the day. Really sad indeed, really sad indeed uh, what the man has been has been tweeting. Anyway, let's move on. Um, there was unrest uh, in a part of Lagos yesterday as uh, Yoruba Nation agitators held their rally in Lagos. I don't know if we can. We roll some of the clips. All right. Um, and let's just listen to what this gentleman of this in Wales are saying. Can we hear what they're saying? All right. <laughs> All right, so there was unrest. I mean, yesterday Twitter was on fire. Um, there was unrest reported in the Ojota axis uh, of Lagos as some uh, supporters of the Yoruba Nation agitation. They held a rally um, in Lagos. They um, put out some information, you know, we monitored some of the tweets on social media. Uh, most of them were saying that the rally was meant to be peaceful and that the police uh, uh, engaged them in, in a shootout uh, and uh, at least two persons were dead. These are reports from people who say they were there and that they put out the information on social media. In fact, uh, there's a picture, you know, of uh, a, a dead body that was put out by uh, a mainland, instant mainland uh, Twitter account, uh, saying that one person was reportedly killed. But one of those who happened to be at that uh, uh, rally, one of the Yoruba Nation supporters, uh, said that uh, two people were killed. Now, of course, this is something that is subject to confirmation. Uh, by the police, but based on the videos and photos shared on social media, it was clear that Ojota was a scene of a clash between the police and members uh, of the Yoruba uh, Nation Agitation uh, Group. Um, an investigation, an investigative journalism platform uh, is saying that a source has told them that two groups suspected to be Odua People's Congress and the Yoruba Nation agitators clashed in the early hours of Monday, resulting in, in the casualty, one casualty. So 
Um, while some of the social media reporters saying the police were the ones who came and attacked Yoruba Nation group holding their uh, uh, mega rally um, to press for self-determination, uh, another report from uh, the Foundation for Investigative Journalism is saying that two groups, Odua People's Congress and Yoruba Nation agitators, just clashed. And that is what led to this alleged death of either one or two people. We're told that this, the police arrived at the scene and shot tear gas to uh, disperse the crowd. And yesterday, uh, the reports indicated that Ojota was the scene of chaos. Um, you know, Ojota was on fire, is what we're hearing. Now, the police public relations officer in Lagos State, Benjamin Houdain, uh, said that normalcy was restored. He couldn't give details um, at the time. Uh, that we filed a report, um, so it's 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 really 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 sad one. Um, if it's a clash between two groups, then it really gives us a lot to worry about, and we're hoping that the police have not gone ahead to, you know, shoot anyone, because uh, that's not what we want to see. I mean, vehicles were put on fire. Um, it, it was chaos. It was chaos. It was chaos all around. Uh, that aspect of a jota just around the Ghani Fawimi Park in that axis of uh, Lagos State. Now, this is not the first time, you know, that we're seeing people, uh, anyone die as a result of a Yoruba Nation um, protest or, or rally. You recall that on July 3, 2021, uh, a sales girl, Jumoke Oyeleke, uh, was shot by the police while trying to disperse the Yoruba Nation protesters. A sales girl was shot by the police. Uh, Jumoke Oyeleke is her name. Uh, coroner's inquest into the circumstances surrounding the events that claimed the life of that 25-year-old sales girl indicted the police, but not, no suspect was released uh, for the prosecution. Okay, um, so, so that's what we have. Really sad uh, one. Um, uh, a report I saw indicated that a, a tricycle operator uh, who refused to disclose his name, I think he was in a punch. Uh, he said he was afraid of being arrested by the police or, or anything, something like that. He said the protesters were demonstrating peacefully when a policewoman gave the order uh, for the police to disperse the crowd. And that was when uh, bullets you know, were being fired at directly at the protesters. So, I mean, we need the police to come out and tell us what really happens happened there. Uh, another eyewitness who is cited by the punch, uh, who is said to run a business in front of the Ojota Ganifa Umi Park, um, said that uh, the protesters arrived at the park at about 3 a.m. on Monday morning. Uh, also went on to tell the paper that buses dropped off the protesters and they saw them clustering and all that. And uh, also saying that the police were the ones who came and scattered everything. Everything was peaceful, uh, they said, until the police came and started shooting tear gas canisters at them uh, to disperse them. But I mean, uh, you know, if <laughs> if tear gas is, is, is fired at such a place, I do not know if it's meant to lead to the death of two people. So we need more information. We need more information. Uh, as we speak, the police have not put out anything that I've seen. So anyway, we'll leave it at that, and um, we hope that an investigation will carry it out and that we can get something uh, from the police in Lagos State. Let's move on. Uh, this one is uh, close to home because it involves a media uh, executive. This time we're talking about Raymond Dopesi, who is uh, the owner of AIT uh, Television. It's African Independent Television and indeed uh, Arepa FM. It's a radio station. You can find it across the country. Now, he's not to be a member of the People's Democratic Party. Um, I mean, we all remember what transpired in 2015. Uh, when AIT put out some documentaries uh, against uh, the current president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, then a candidate uh, of the All Progressives Congress. Um, so his, his relationship, his activities, involvement with the People's Democratic Party is well documented. Of course, right now, um, the PDP has a presidential candidate in the mold of uh, Atiku Abubakar. Well, the founder of Dark Communication, owner of um, AIT and Repa, um, we told that he was arrested by police in the United Kingdom yesterday and released yesterday. Uh, he's, like I said, a chieftain of the PDP. Um, multiple uh, media reports on Sunday said he was arrested in London. 
Um, he's also the Director General of uh, the PDP Presidential Campaign Council in charge of technical and systems. I don't know what that means, uh, but a report said yesterday that he was reportedly picked up at Heathrow Airport in London uh, after touching down from Frankfurt on Sunday uh, ahead of a meeting with the PDP presidential candidate Tiko Abubaka, who is in London. Um, some have suspected that he's also going to take care of his health while he is there. Um, now, the reports that we monitored did not really indicate the incident or the reason for the incident and the reason for uh, the arrest or detention of Raymond uh, Dr. C. But his visit to the UK is connected to an invitation uh, by the UK government to Atiku. Uh, we're told he's been invited to share perspectives on issues around the 2023 uh, general uh, elections. Okay. Now, uh, something was put out by Dark Communications. I'm just going to read some excerpts of that. They're saying that uh, Dr. C was delayed at the airport for some, to quote, uh, Dr. C was delayed at the airport for some hours before his passport was stamped and he was cleared by the British immigration officials for entry into the country. Uh, they went on to say Chief Dr. C wishes to thank all for their outpour of love, prayers and support following the news of the incident and to reassure all that he is uh, hail and hearty. You know, it's political season, so when these things happen, uh, it's bound to, to attract attention, especially uh, if it involves any of the major political parties or their officials. So Dr. Messi is a major figure in the PDP presidential campaign. And, uh, of course, 2023 is around the corner. That's the biggest news in Nigeria, anything about the elections. But for me, it's not really an issue. Um, you know, if he has a, a something to, to answer for in the UK uh he would have been detained, probably taken to court. I don't know it's, if it's an immigration issue or some other thing. But he's been released and he was let go. So I think that's the end of the story. <laughs> there are very important things to look at, especially why uh, Atiku is in the UK uh, and what he will do while there. Will he give a speech? Is he going to go to Chatham House? You know, will he say some things that he's not told to the Nigerian media or to Nigerians in the country like some of the other candidates? I don't know. Time will tell. But we'll keep watching. And monitoring that's the much you can take on this segment uh training segment we'll be right back we have the paper review up ahead